shall come to me. No arrow strike me down. No evil settle in my soul. Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. The God of mercy. The God who saves. I shall not be. I shall not be. The dark of night. The dark of night. Nor the Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Edward for our celebration of the Most Holy Trinity. Before we begin, we ask that you please silence your cell phones. Thank you. Our presider today is Father Rick. Please join us in singing our gathering song, number 428, I Sing the Mighty Power of God, number 428. name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, we gather this Sunday morning on this great day of celebration when we celebrate the Blessed Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the central mystery of our Christian faith. So as we gather as one family in faith, we first take a moment to pause and reflect on those times that we've sinned so that we might prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. 
Lord Jesus, you who come to change the hearts of those who falter, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. Christ Jesus, you bid us to seek forgiveness of our sins and reconciliation to you. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are our Savior, our risen Redeemer. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Thus says the wisdom of God. The Lord possessed me, the beginning of his ways, the forerunner of his prodigies of long ago. From of old I was poured forth, at first before the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains or springs of water, 
Before the mountains were settled into place, before the hills, I was brought forth. While as yet the earth and fields were not made, nor the clods of the world. When the Lord established the heavens, I was there. When he marked out the vault over the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he fixed the fast mountain, the, fa the fast the foundations of the earth, when he set for the sea its limit, so that the water should not transgress his command. Then I was beside him as his craftsman, and I was his delight day by day, plain before him all the while, plain on the surface of his earth, and I found delight in the human race. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith 
to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we even boast of our afflictions, knowing that affliction produces endurance, and endurance proven character, and proven character hope. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears and will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I have told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. We are in the middle of what we might call a, a, a triduum of sorts. It's not the triduum that takes place uh, during Holy Week, uh, but a triduum of great solemnities, of great celebrations. Last Sunday we celebrated Pentecost, this Sunday we're celebrating Trinity Sunday, and next Sunday we will celebrate uh, Corpus Christi Sunday, the body and blood of Christ. So it's a, a wonderful time in the church year of celebrations of uh, essential aspects and essential mysteries of our faith. Okay. You know, there are some people who are gifted by God, who are blessed really from uh, the moment of their conception, uh, the moment of their birth, uh, with an extremely um, brilliant intellect. However, the genes combined in the conception, uh, people that very smart, very intelligent, and really could understand, could embrace about every topic of knowledge, every area of study, uh, without really much of any uh, difficulty. I have no problem studying any field of science or technology or uh, the liberal arts, whatever it might be. Usually, for the rest of us, though, however, there are particular subjects that we struggled with when we were going through our schooling, whether it was our uh, K through 12, or if we went to uh, school, um, university, or college, or any kind of post-high uh, school education. Um, there usually was at least one subject, if not more, that was uh, the bane of our existence. And for me, 
It was physics, the subject of physics. Uh, last night at Mass, we had uh, one of our parishioners here who had been a high school physics teacher uh, here in the area for um, many, uh, many years. He couldn't relate. <laughs> he couldn't relate. Um, but, you know, I, I didn't consider myself, uh, you know, ignorant in, in, in any way. I had studied biology and chemistry and other areas of science as I was going through uh, school and then uh, uh, post high school. But man, when it came to physics, that was like a totally different thing, a totally different language. It was just a struggle, a constant struggle for me. I can remember during the first lecture at Purdue, um, see, I made the mistake, I knew I was not going to like physics and I had to take two semesters of it. I made the mistake of putting it off until my senior year, which was also not a very good thing to do. But anyway, sitting there in that lecture hall of about 300 students and looking down at the professor from above, writing all of these things uh, on the board, uh, I felt like I had entered the land of the lost. <laughs> For those of you who are about my age, or maybe a little bit younger, or maybe even a little bit older, there was a, su a Saturday morning uh, TV show, The Land of the Lost. Does anybody remember that? Some do? Okay, I, I, Gina remembers. I could sing you the song for it, but, but I won't. I think they actually made a movie uh, about it um, not too many years ago. I don't remember seeing it, but I think Will Ferrell played uh, the starring role. Uh, Land of the Lost uh, was they wound up back kind of like in prehistoric times, and they had the slee stacks, which were these lizard-looking evil creatures and, and, and all the rest, but that's what I felt like. Man, I was in the land of the lost. I had no idea what was going on, but thankfully, 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 God provides, and by the grace of God, I had my personal relationship, a personal relationship with my very own Lord and Savior of physics. And that was my roommate. My roommate was a mechanical engineering major. He graduated, would go on to graduate with straight A's, went on to MIT, got a combined master's in engineering and an MBA. Very smart, very uh, intelligent fellow. So let's just say my roommate helped me with my physics homework. I would bring home the assignment and I would be sitting there at the table and just frustration and pulling out my hair and not like Joe, but wondering where God was in, in all of this and pounding on the table and yelling and still not being able to solve the problem. So I would say, hey, Doug, come over here. And he would look at it. Oh, okay. This is what you do. This is what you do. This is what you do. And in a minute, what took me two hours to not get anywhere, in a minute he solved the, the problem. So that worked out really well. We eventually got a way to go about doing it where I didn't have to struggle for so much before he would actually step in and solve the problem for me. Never was I so grateful in any class, in any endeavor in my life, to just pass. And to this day, physics to me is a mystery. It's a mystery. Something I'll never quite fully understand. I know it exists. I know it's part of the laws of science that come to us from God that govern the universe and how it works, but it will always remain a mystery. I'll never be able to fully comprehend it, and there will always be something in my mind and my intellect that will be lacking in regard to physics. What does all that mean for us today? Well, today we celebrate Trinity Sunday, this great celebration of our God. The Trinity, unlike physics, which was a mystery to me, is really a mystery to us all. We kind of understand Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, some basic things that we understand, but it is a mystery. It's the greatest mystery. It's the most central mystery of our faith, and we remind ourselves of the centrality of that mystery every time we pray, whether we pray individually, on our own, in the privacy of our homes. Jesus speaks of that, praying in your room, or whether we pray as a gathered community. We always do
do that sign of the cross in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We are marking ourselves with our great mystery of faith. The Trinity is something that will always be somewhat veiled to us. It will be shrouded in mystery. It's something we'll never fully understand on this side of the veil between time and eternity. But here's the thing. It's not a mystery to run away from, like physics was a mystery for me to run away from if I had a choice. It's a mystery to run to. It's a mystery for us to embrace and to love, even if we don't fully comprehend it, to love that mystery with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Because ultimately, what the mystery of the Trinity is about, to try to sum it up as best as we can in our limited human language, the mystery of the Trinity is that God, who is one, is not alone is not solitary. God is one, but God is not solitary or alone. God exists in a communion of the three divine persons. We know the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Each person is distinct. Each person is separate from the other, but all fully possess the same divine nature. We could say the same divine essence or the same divine stuff. One of the early heresies in the church regard, was in regard to the Trinity, and it was a heresy, heresy means a false teaching, that was called modalism. It believed in the idea of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but not three distinct persons. What it basically said was there was one person who would move about into these three different modes. Father, and then move into the mode of the Son, and then move into the mode of the Holy Spirit. But that was one of the many, many heresies that was rejected, because how do we explain then Jesus praying, and this is, we see this throughout the gospel, praying to the Father. Uh, one person cannot pray to himself, uh, so that heresy was ultimately rejected. Each of the persons of the Trinity are of the same substance, the same essence, the same stuff. It's the word we use in the creed when we profess our faith. I believe in one God. And then we go on from there. And then we use that word, consubstantial. Consubstantial just means with the same substance, the same essence, the same stuff. But here's a wonderful thing. God does not want us to remain in the dark when it comes to our understanding of this greatest mystery of our faith. God wants us to have a relatable way to have some understanding of it. Again, not a complete understanding. That will happen when we pass from this life to the next. But an understanding that we can embrace. One way that God does this is by revealing the mystery of the Trinity to us through us. What does that mean? God reveals the mystery of the Trinity to us through us. We are all made in the image and likeness of God. And most of the time we attribute that, we say, well, we have a soul, a spirit, like God is a spirit, and that is absolutely correct. But we are also made another way in the image and likeness of God who is one but three. All we have to do to understand this in a limited way is to see the beauty of our families and how our families reflect the image and likeness of God who is a trinity, who is a communion of persons. Think about it this way. Our families are like God. We are like God in that we are a communion of persons, a community of life and love. Our families, imperfect as they are, and we know we're not always united as we should be, that's part of our fallen human nature, but our families, while they vary in the number of persons, regardless of that number, our family, each of our families is one, or at least that is what we are called to be, one. 
My family was made up of five, five people, five distinct, different persons, different and distinct from each other. But we were one family. We were one community of persons. We were one community of life and love. And so it is with God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That is the beautiful, awesome, central mystery of faith that we celebrate today. One God, three persons, a community of life and love in whose image and likeness every single one of us has been created. If we want a little bit of a glimpse into the mystery of the Trinity, God has given us a way to do that. We need look no further than our own families. We need look no further than our own families and see a part of the beauty of who God is revealed in us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. Believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we look beyond the present moment to embrace the mystery that is the eternal God, we lift up our prayers and petitions. That those who minister within the church may be moved to give glory always to the Father, through the Son, in the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That our church may be moved by the unity of the Trinity to seek reconciliation amongst all Christians working together to bring the good news of the gospel to all peoples and all lands. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That our world may be moved by the Father's creative love for mankind to strive ever harder for peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That our community may be moved by the Son's concern for the poor, the sick, and the oppressed, to be a source of comfort and solace to all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That each of us, and especially our graduates and all involved in education, may be moved by the Spirit to accept the gifts we are offered and to use them to further the kingdom of God on earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have fallen asleep in death, for Larry Tucker, who passed away a week ago, may they live forever in the eternal glory that is the Trinity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Medford and Charlotte Wrench, whom we remember in a special way at this liturgy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, hear the prayers we humbly offer to you and answer them according to your will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join us in singing our preparation song, number 432, How Great Thou Art, 432. <laughs>
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of his name. For the good of all his holy church. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you. Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice they acclaim. <laughs> Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Edward and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. 
Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join us in our communion song number 579, Worthy is the Lamb, 579. <laughs> Oh, no. 
Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. And our vocation prayer, God, our Father, you made each of us to use our gifts in the body of Christ. We ask that you inspire young people whom you call to priesthood and consecrated life to courageously follow your will. Send workers into your great harvest so that the gospel is preached, the poor are served with love, the suffering are comforted, and your people are strengthened by the sacraments. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal holy trinity and undivided unity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A few announcements this morning. A big thank you uh, for all involved in the rummage sale, uh, led uh, by John and June Leader, and all so many of you who participated over these uh, past weeks, and especially the last week. Uh, the total uh, proceeds from the rummage sale uh, broke another record. People uh, were generous in uh, donating uh, throughout the year, and uh, with inflation, people were looking for bargains. Uh, the proceeds wound up being uh, $33,000 uh, for the church. 2,000 of that was from the bake sale, 1,000 of that was me. Mary's uh, prayer hour will be Monday at 3 p.m. in the church. All are welcome to attend and participate. Father's Day, which is next Sunday, Father's Day memorial envelopes are at all the exits. Please fill out the envelope and return it to the office. Uh, we don't normally do this, but it does involve our children, so it's of great importance. Uh, Tri Creek is in desperate need of bus drivers and bus aides. If interested, pick up a flyer in the vestibule for more information. Uh, there are some flyers uh, on the, one of the tables there as you're kind of going in the direction of the restrooms. Also, please see in the bulletin there's a flyer. It's bilingual, English on one side, Spanish on the other, about the diocesan Eucharistic procession that is planned for next Sunday uh, afternoon, June 19th. Deacon Bill also reminds liturgical ministers that the new schedules are in the vestibule on the table on the left-hand side on your way out. Please pick up yours today. And also want to remind you, as we are in this month of June, when we are expecting uh, the United States Supreme Court to issue their official ruling, we had a leaked ruling, but to issue their official ruling on uh, the Dobbs versus Jackson case and how that will uh, impact Roe versus Wade, uh, that we uh, pray um, uh, for the uh, outcome that uh, our our God desires, and that no matter what the outcome might be, uh, one way or the other, that uh, uh, turmoil, violence, uh, all of those kinds of things uh, uh, may be diminished uh, in our country. Uh, I put that out through Flocknote and on our Facebook page, but there are also some paper copies, trifolds, uh, for the novena of prayer uh, in the vestibule. Anything else? Okay. You know, uh, I tease, uh, but Deacon Bill is in pain when he's here using that walking stick. It's not, uh, it's not uh, just a limp. Uh, he, he's in pain. But I'm thinking about putting a rock out in the center of the church and see if, like Moses, if he taps on it with his staff, <laughs> that water will spring forward from the rock. But just remember, don't tap twice because... <laughs> You won't get to see the promised land if you tap twice. But, you know, if you keep making fun of me, I may throw it on the ground and it will turn into a snake. Uh, <laughs> I'll just go across the street or, and get my cat and she'll take care of it. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks Thanks be to to God. God. Please join us in singing our closing song, number 619, Your Grace is Enough, 619. Please take all bulletins home with you. Please do not leave anything in the pews. Thank you.